Let me tell you what we have planned for you uh, this evening or whatever time it is where you are. Right here, it's uh, 7.30 at night. Uh, back home, we're from Hawaii, by the way. Back home, I think it's, uh, it's really different. I don't want to think I about that. I don't even do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in just a minute, we'll, we'll do what we call a self-connection exercise, which is kind of like a meditation. And it's a chance for you to actually uh, get the direct experience that you already know everything we're about to teach you about the zero step. We don't have to teach you anything about it. It's okay where it was, I can see. Okay. And um, so we'll do a little self-connection exercise that'll give you a direct experience. Then we'll tell you a little bit about what we mean by the zero step and where we came up with that, uh, that idea. And uh, then we will have a little section about uh, what's the problem? What's the problem with NBC? Kind of exploring a little bit about our experience as we were learning NBC and what we've been hearing from people that we've been sharing NBC with for the last uh, 17 years. Uh, some of the uh, problem states that are very common and hopefully we can save you and your family some suffering and then uh, the, the, we'll move into another section called what's the best thing that could happen in terms of uh, using the zero step and incorporating it with your nonviolent communication practice and then we'll finish up with some thoughts and some practices in terms of how you can cultivate the zero step in your own experience. And so that's what the plan is. And I'm sweating a bit, so pardon me. It's <laughs> only about, uh, I don't know what temperature you would call it. In, um, where you live. Where you, well, in Celsius, but in uh, Fahrenheit, it's 90 degrees here and quite humid. Yeah. And no fan. So on that note, I'd love to actually just have us stop and just find our own sense of connection would you like to lead a self-connection yeah. exercise yep and i notice uh, that i hear a little noise on the call and i don't seem to have the power to mute and unmute but it looks like it's fabiola's line so um yeah it seems to be quiet at the moment so thank you okay i'm incredibly curious if fabiola is someone that i've had communication with about a decade ago I think I know her. <laughs> so anyway, here comes our self-connection exercise. You can do this with your eyes open or your eyes closed. It's totally up to you. First, let me just check. Is there anything getting in the way of us doing the self-connection exercise? Is there something that somebody else wants to say before we do that? Just raise your hand or send a little chat. If there's something that prevents you from wanting to do this right now. And you are free to do whatever you do, obviously, in your own space. But the invitation is really to start by focusing on our own direct experience. And that's part of the grounding of being here now. <gasps> the power. lights just went on. We'll see what happens. We'll see. see, it's the power of the zero step. <laughs> just setting your own intention here. Wow. Oh my God, the fans are starting. Yes. So. Um, life changes. So we'll continue with the exercise. Just notice um, first that you're breathing. Just bring your attention to the simple act of giving and receiving represented by every breath that you take. The person that likes to likes touch, just put your hand on your heart. And notice what it feels like to have your hand on your heart. And imagine that as your hand touches your heart, your chest, that there's automatically a quality of warmth where you're generating warmth between your hand and your heart and your heart and your hand. Just let yourself feel that warmth. And notice your face and greet whatever you find in terms of the sensations of your face with a quality of gentleness and acceptance. 
Don't try to change anything. Just notice the sensations in your own face. And greet those sensations with a sense of warmth. In other words, it's okay to have these sensations in my face right now. You might notice as you stay tuned in to the sensations in your face that they change from moment to moment, or maybe the part of the face that you focus on changes from moment to moment. That's, that's fine. That's okay. Just watch that. If you notice any quality of discomfort or pain or tension in your face, just acknowledge it for yourself, name it. Tight jaw, dry mouth, whatever it is for you. And name it for yourself with a warm, gentle voice. as if you're the kindest kindergarten teacher in the world, acknowledging your own experience. And likewise, if you notice something pleasant in your face, maybe um, you notice you're smiling or there's a softness to your forehead or whatever, just acknowledge that with that same quality of warmth. And then follow these warm feelings deeper into your heart with a wonder, what's my intention for being on this call tonight? In other words, what needs are you hoping to contribute to? by making the choice to be right here, right now. And again, if you find it helpful, just gently name the needs that you identify with a warm and loving voice. And bring a quality of savoring these beautiful needs. And finally, just see if there's any requests, anything that you might be asking of yourself in order to be more fully present with the call or whatever other needs that you bring to this moment. Are there any requests for you? And again, play with talking to yourself about these requests with this gentle, warm, loving voice. As if you you would like some ice cream. Would you like that ice cream? Is that what you would really like? And then just to finish up, just notice how your body feels right now, having had this experience. I'd love to hear from two people about how this 
brief exercise was for you. So if you'd like to be heard with a sentence or two about what it was like, just let, uh, raise your hand or send us a chat. And we'll open up your mic. How was this for you? if everybody knows how to raise their hand. Well, I think he suggested there would be a chat. They would send a okay, chat. Okay, great. So the, for those of you who come in later, there is a chat the second uh, on the very Somebody bottom. Somebody wants to just raise their hands. That would also be good. Okay. Yeah, raise your hand or. Yeah, Neeraj. Yes, yeah, go ahead. So I love you. Uh, I see Fabiola. Yeah. So I felt uh, really peaceful and uh, the, the quiet felt me more, uh, made me feel more relaxed. And uh, every now and then my thoughts were wandering here and there, but I was totally comfortable with that. That's, Thank you, that's all. Yeah. Thank you. Fabiola. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, I appreciate very much the voice that guided me and um, to notice the things because in, at the beginning I was very agitated. My body was like very agitated and my heart was too much agitated. And then feeling the, the warmth of my hand and then even when I, I noticed uh, the sensations that disturbed me in my face, and I noticed the, the, the sensations, it, it changed immediately. It changed um, to be more soft. So it was very interesting, this, this movement. When I gave attention, it, it just like changed. Yes, the power of acknowledgement. Thank you, Fabiola. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Ah, yes. There we go. Yes, Rajiv. <clears throat> I felt that uh, initially I was feeling the sensations, but as uh, when you say to put the hand on on the heart, I, I start feeling uh, some tears starts coming out from my eyes, and I didn't know what was it. Later on, I realized this is part of the belief since the childhood that boys don't cry, so this is some repressed feelings were coming out, mm. and. Uh, so it was a really good uh, for being mindful and aware of what's going on inside. And so thank you for that. Thank you, Rajiv. And thank you for reminding me of that suggestion I made about putting your hand on your heart. There's, we're actually a neurologically wired up to have a, a, a hormonal response to the hand on the heart. And so when we place our hand on our heart, we're actually sending a signal to our, our brain that says, open up the heart, open up love, open up warmth. And um, so it's a very quick and easy way to access this thing that we're calling the zero step. It's as close as your heart and your hand at any given moment. What a beautiful thing that we can just touch our heart and be able to reconnect to the, the whole nervous system, the whole brain actually, since the heart is mostly neural fiber, it is actually neurologically um, sometimes called a brain. And so it wakes us up. And I'd like to celebrate actually this whole idea of the zero step and how very transformational it was for us very early on. We we're fortunate when we learned MVC that we were introduced in 2000, there was already a practice group going in our community. And it was something called a leaderful practice group. I like to share that with people so that they realize even that that's a possibility that a group of people get together and that they take turns doing a little lesson and, and um, taking some lead in a group so that they can learn and, and support each other together. And it just so happened that a man named Mel Snyder did a lesson and he wrote up one, two, three, four for the various components of NBC. Now, this is how a lot of us tend to relate to NBC observations, feelings, needs, requests. So he wrote that up on the board 
And then above it, he wrote zero. And he spent his time talking about what he meant by zero. And it was transformative for us. What he was talking about was how important our intention is. How important it is for us to actually take the time to align ourselves very much like we are doing when we do a self-connection exercise that like we just did to really look what is our intention we just start talking oh i see this and i feel that because i need this or even more disconnecting because i don't have that in this particular need and then oh yes i have to have a request tell me what you heard me say and um if we if we come from that kind of energy we actually lose the very heart of mvc the very intention of mvc to create a quality of connection and the quality of connection is one that inspires us to want to give and receive together a real sense of um, being together and also for us to remember where we put our attention on the heart of the other person in the present moment or in our own toward our own heart in the present moment and that was extremely helpful in terms of being a baby giraffe having just met Marshall and trying to do it right trying to fix my beloved trying to communicate with our kids who are, are you want to stop oh, no. our, our our two children had gone off to college both of them just a month or so before we met marshall and um they came home about two months after we or one month after we met them and i remember clearly our daughter saying and she jokes about it too she remembers too going who stole my parents and left you here? Because we were talking so robotically. Yeah. So just to summarize what we mean when we say the zero step, it's uh, the intention to connect in the service of compassionate giving and bringing attention to the present moment. So we figured out a way to take seven words and bring it down into two. So Marshall, you know, was a master of few words, and he never used this, this concept that I know of. I, I never heard the zero step from him. I heard it from Mel. But it came so early in our NBC career that it became anchored to our own hearts and our own way of learning and expressing NBC. And um, then about two years ago, uh, we started really emphasizing the zero step because we were noticing that um, uh, a lot of people were were kind of getting a little hung up in a right wrong game about NBC and we wanted to save them the same kind of suffering that we were stimulating with our daughter and uh, to have to make NBC more of a fun thing to do rather than to uh, make it a chore and so a few of the aspects of or characteristics of the zero step that we want you to kind of just feel in your own body to, so that you can have an anchor point to be one presence to notice that nbc can only happen in the present moment in fact you could try it right now try to do nbc yesterday <laughs> raise your hand if you can do that right now okay nobody's raising their hand all right try to do it tomorrow or even five minutes from now <laughs> no so again it, it's not so hard because it's just a reminder to bring ourselves to what's actually happening right now, where everything about NBC can happen. So the other bit that's really important that I notice in our relationship is to cultivate this quality of warmth. And so, you know, when we're caught up with each other, warmth is about the farthest thing from our minds. In fact, I, I can judge her as cold or I feel cold. And so to remember that NBC happens in a warm cradle of compassion. And that actually comes out of being focused with some clarity that care matters. You know, really having care for ourselves and care for each other. 
and then to open up with wonder. I wonder what's going to happen if I try NBC here. To not have an expectation that something is necessarily going to happen, but rather to wonder what might happen next. And in fact, be open to outcome so that we don't have our agenda already set within narrow bounds of this is where we have to get to. You know, there's your child, and no matter what happens, they're going to brush their teeth. <laughs> so, so we stay open to outcome, to find some with a willingness to explore what could work for everyone. And then three other quick aspects of the zero step that let you know that you're actually experiencing. One is you're, you're likely to be vulnerable. You're likely to be able to speak from your own heart about your own pain or about your own celebration. Secondly, there's a natural quality of empathy. I wonder what's going on in her when she's hearing my voice. And finally, when you're coming from zero, you naturally make requests, especially connection requests. You say something like, how do you feel when you hear me say that? That's number one connection request that's easiest for people to learn. And it's the one that's most natural in a conversation. And, but the even more important connection requests what did you hear was important to me? I just opened up my heart in a vulnerable way. I wonder what you heard. Yeah, I really want to make sure I'm clear that I've communicated what I actually meant. What did you hear? To, add, to have that honoring of our messages being sent and received and other people sending messages and us receiving it. So to create that back and forth and back and forth, and that comes naturally from this zero step when we have the intention to connect. So here's an example from my own life. Uh, this happened maybe, um, oh, a week or two before we uh, started our journey uh, that we're on right now, which is a, uh, about a 90-day journey throughout Asia, teaching and learning in BC. And, um, I noticed that I was hiding something from Jory. And we have a commitment to not hide anything from each other. And it had been bothering me for a while that I, I noticed that I was, I was withholding a little something. And so first I started with that quality of warmth towards myself, giving myself permission to be scared to bring up this topic, uh, coming to myself with this quality of warmth, giving myself some empathy. Maybe even giving yourself permission that you were hiding something. Up exactly, yeah. exactly. And then somehow something cracked open and a willingness and a wonder. I wonder what would happen if I actually was brave enough to bring this up. Of course, in my mind, my jackal mind, I think as soon as I bring this up, she's going to pack her bags and leave and I'm never going to see her again. And boy, wasn't that a mistake. But uh, I just stayed with the self-empathy. Oh, so you're really feeling scared. And, and about how vulnerable this is. And you really want some understanding that you don't know what's gonna happen. So then after a, some period of time, uh, I actually was able to approach Jory with a quality of wonder, vulnerability, and warmth. And I, I think my first sentence to her was something uh, like, um, and I believe even by the time I was uh, opening my mouth, I already had tears in my eyes. And I said something like, you know, I'm really, really scared to bring this up because I don't think I've been keeping our agreement. And I'm not sure how it's going to be for you. So I just started with my own vulnerability, talking about my own feelings, linked them to my own needs. I really want to stay connected. And, and I, it's really important for my own integrity that, that we talk about this. And before we go any further, I just want to just check, uh, is, is this a good time for us to talk about it? And she said, yes. And so... I was my heart actually opened up with that level of vulnerability you know there are, often when someone says I haven't been telling you something I've got to tell you there's this sense of fear I and mean, oh my goodness but there was such a sense of warmth and openness that I can't even remember what he was talking about but I do remember the warmth Isn't and we ended up talking for like four hours almost like lovers on a on a on a, on a new date and it was one of the most profoundly connecting conversations that I can remember in a long time. And I really think it just because my zero step supported Jory in her zero step. 
And so we'll just pause right here and see if there's any questions or reactions before we move into the next step. Not seeing any comments yeah. at all on that. Nor there are no here. comments, there are no hands up. So everything okay, is very so clear, I guess. Okay. I, I am looking at people who are pretty engaged, which is reassuring yeah. because there are no hands and no chat. Great, but thank it you. It is really wonderful to see all your faces. It is really cool. Yeah, those of them that I see. So the, then, the, then it opens up the possibility. What's the problem no, here? I have something to say. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just want to know that why is it called the zero step? Ah, okay. So remember, Jory talked about Mel. He started by putting one, two, three, four up on mm -hmm. his whiteboard. Mm -hmm. And then after one, he wrote observation, two, feeling, three, need, four, request. And then he, above the one, he wrote zero. And so we That's nicknamed it. From then on, the zero yeah. step. What happens before we do observation, feeling, need, and request? Thank you. Thank you for asking. Because it's a perfect segue into what's the problem. If we don't do that, if we don't actually pause with zero, and we just launch into NBC, it's usually because we have some kind of quality of single-mindedness of purpose. We want our kids to not put their socks on the floor, we'd rather put them in the hamper. We want the dog to be walked. We want uh, the dishes to be cleaned. Whatever the, 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 the thing is, whatever the- um, Objective. Uh, the, yeah, we become very objectively oriented. What do we want to happen? And then we can use NBC in a really mechanical way. When I see the dishes are not been done and you told me that you were gonna do them, I feel frustrated and angry because I need you to uh, <laughs> keep your agreements would you be willing to put those dishes away right now? And so there, it has almost everything that's the opposite of the zero step, uh, kind of built into that kind of, uh, of a communication. And you can even check yourself in this moment and consider if someone approached you in that way, how much motivation do you have to contribute anything to this person? And how much um, joy might you find or even willingness to do dishes when you're approached this way. And so that's, again, why we talk about zero is how do we get to a place where the connection matters and there's openness about it instead of bringing it forth in a way that is received as a manipulation. You know, you don't really matter when we're in that space of trying to convince no, you don't matter, just my outcome matters. So without the zero step, NBC can be a mechanical process. And uh, Marshall actually had a nickname for, uh, for us, all the collective we, when we were thinking NBC was a mechanical process. He, may, he nicknamed it four steppers, that there was this quality of, we just have to get through these four things and then we're gonna get what we want. And uh, so, so he has a quote from Marshall here that I have. Um, During the initial phases of learning this process, we may find ourselves applying the components of NBC mechanically without awareness of the underlying purpose. And so Marshall warned us, I think that's a quote directly out of language of life, very early in the book. He warned us that it's not about applying a, a, a language or a skill without this quality of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And in one of the chapters of, I think it was the first chapter, there is the quote by Rumi, there is a field beyond right doing and wrong doing. I'll meet you there. Mm -hmm. And that actually points to the zero step, that when we drop that there's a right way or a wrong way or there's a pathway, the zero step is really that field. You can probably have a look at your own experience and you either have heard yourself say or someone else that you've been practicing NBC with, you might have had some sense of a corrective energy applied. Someone says something like, um, that's not a feeling, that's a non-feeling or that's a faux feeling or you're, you know, some sort of um, corrective about whether or not it's a proper NBC feeling. Or maybe you've gotten into arguments with people 
about whether such and such is actually in need. Mm. And so this is all coming from our old habit uh, that Marshall nicknamed Jackal, the thinking of things in terms of right and wrong, good and bad, appropriate, inappropriate. And we take this old paradigm and, and map it right on top of this beautiful new paradigm called NBC. And then we lose the essence of what NBC was invented to cultivate, this quality of connection inspire, to, that's designed to inspire natural giving and receiving. So again, I want to open it up to see if there are any comments or, you know, at any point, um, remember there's a chat there so that you can make sure that I, that you're understanding and it supports us in really being able to communicate in a way that works for everybody here. Anything? Yes, Fiona, for Fabiola, sorry. Oh, volevo, um, I'd like to ask uh, this, uh, I found it so uh, wonderful, this exercise. I'd like to, to understand better how to get to this uh, zero point zero step when we are in the middle of an alive situation. Um, do you think that we, if we train this uh, when we are alone, like when we do self-empathy, it comes better when we are some in the situation that it's difficult to go and sit and put <laughs> The, the hand in the heart and do all this process because because I think it's um, this point is something that it was difficult for me in the beginning to practice this the NVC. So how, how what do you suggest to create this zero point when we are in a difficult situation? Thank you for asking this because this is really such a key point and in fact the, one of the most important pieces is to be able to recognize that we're not in zero. That's what gets in the way, even more than getting to it, we, we, we don't always realize we are out of sync, that syn synchronicity with our own being. So that's where it starts, is to start by realizing that something's going on. And what's going on when we're not in zero is that we've lost our natural state of equanimity. And we, our nervous system is hardwired to actually move us away from zero when we have any sense of danger, any sense of a lack of safety. You know, I imagine you've all heard fight, flight, freeze. Um, so just, that's the very first part. If we can recognize that, in fact, it's natural that we would move back into zero unless we continue to fuel ourselves out of zero. You know, it's actually the things we're doing that get in the way that are so important to recognize. And since getting out of, since zero is our natural state, and we're hardwired to come out of zero into a, a different chemical balance, then there is a period of time that it takes for us to come back into balance. Not answering your question quite so fully yet until we understand the situation that we're finding ourselves in. So, one thing I would like to point out is is right now check and see whether you're in a state of calm alert and basically in a state of being open to outcome right now. Is your nervous system all wired up or are you calm? No. In this moment, no. Yeah. You're calm. And for everybody, just to notice for yourself, are you in a relatively calm, open space? Yeah. I, my guess is probably at least 90% of you are because it's our natural state. 
And then the good news for women is it usually only takes about five minutes for women to come back into a balanced state unless we keep feeding it with our judgments. Men, unfortunately, have different chemicals in their body than the women. Women have oxytocin. Our history is the nurturers. So we needed to learn how to come back into balance. Men, historically, were the hunters and gatherers. They needed to find a way to keep the energy going. We were the warriors, and so we, we learned how to, our, the, the ancestors that survived uh, were the ones who were able to keep pumping out the testosterone. So it takes us around 20 minutes, maybe even 30, to begun, come back to zero again. And so this, can, this is great information to have for those of you who are in relationships, because you probably had this experience where mm -hmm. you're fighting with your sweetheart, and then you go to your separate corners because you you know, that's just our tendency is to move away from pain. And then after about five minutes, she comes to try to reconnect with me. And I'm nowhere near ready yet. You know, I need another 15 minutes. But if she is, continues to pursue me, I will, I will experience her as if she is a saber-toothed tiger instead of my beloved. And I will move into attack. And so to get back to the... To I want to I wanna just say that I make it my habit now almost in every group where there are women to let women know this because then we experience it as some sort of rejection and how important it is for us to understand that the men in our life need a bit more space to come back into balance. So while she's doing her three minutes or five minutes of getting back to... Um, you know, she's got a big head start on me. I need about 15 or 20 to do my own self-empathy, maybe take a walk, maybe take a run, listen to some music. I mean, find, you know, if you have a pocket full of 100 strategies that uh, can support your own resilience, that helps, including putting your hand on your heart. But the thing I found most helpful, Fabiola, is to notice that the zero step is this natural state that most of the time I'm in. It. In fact, every time, you feel a so-called positive emotion, like gratitude, wonder, awe, joy, peace, love. Those are all the uh, natural byproducts of the zero step. And so you start, uh, Marshall's genius was to notice, begin to notice gratitude and to start using NBC even during, uh, especially during moments of gratitude, doing the exact same process of meeting yourself with warmth, naming what your feelings are, connecting to your needs, seeing if there's a request. And this begins to wire our nervous systems to respond in a way other than fight or flight, to actually uh, give a new choice to our nervous system so we don't go down the old rabbit hole of reactivity. I want to know if that answers your question, Fabiola. Yeah. Yes. Some of you may actually, once who were on earlier, uh, in the very beginning of this call, even before the hour started, or maybe just after, um, I mentioned how we were having a power outage here. That I mean, We'd been sitting in the dark for an hour trying to solve how we were going to deal with being in a power outage and doing um, a call. And you might remember, I, I mentioned to myself, well, this must be acceptable because this is happening. So that's actually very close to a very, a, a pattern that I use and that, that I've used and suggest to people for a long time. There are all kinds of self-empathy processes, but in really a pinch, it starts with giving myself permission to be feeling whatever I'm feeling. Because any resistance I have to my current experience will only intensify my disconnection, only, only move me away further from that place of balance and openness. So that's the first step for me. And then I extend that permission to whatever and whoever is around me. 
May I give everybody else permission to be human and to be doing and some acknowledgement that this is just what's happening. I give the universe permission to have a thunderstorm and the electrical system to go out and even myself and my friend who let us use this as a more reliable place to do this. Yeah, you know, just extending that permission out as far as I can. Because guess what? It's happening anyway. Might as well, right? And then the third part, as Jim mentioned, is try and think of one thing you're grateful for. That is a chemical shift. And maybe it's two things you're grateful for. But to shift, to create a balance of the reality. I look at people on this call and I know that you have probably have had enough food to eat today. That you do have lights on in your house. That you, there are a lot of things that are working in life all the time. But we lose it with our tunnel vision. That's where we lose our zero step. So just thinking of one thing you're grateful for and adding another one if you need to can help our, us come back to our natural state. Any other, any other, anything about that not make sense to anyone? Ah, here's some comments. So let's see what we've got here. Is zero stage only before observation or can be practiced before Every next step. Absolutely. In fact, in fact the, the way we're teaching NVC now is um, we call it nine skills for uh, navigating conflict. And the idea is you can imagine um, a, uh, like, a, 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 like a dance floor kind of a situation where zero step is in the actual middle of the floor surrounded by a bunch of other NVC skills like making requests or doing empathy or expressing your honesty and so forth. And that after each step, of whatever we're intuitively led to say out of the zero step, we return to zero for just a moment and figure out, okay, now from here, where do I want to go? And so, yes, the answer to that one is yes. All, in my experience, the more, the more caught up I am, the more emotionally charged I am, the more I need to return to zero, cultivate that sense of warmth towards myself and others. And from there, I trust what's gonna happen next. In fact, that's the best thing that can happen by beginning to look through the lens of the zero step is that from, from zero, NBC fulfills its strategic function, which is, uh, NBC is a strategy, right? It's a strategy with what purpose? The purpose is to create a quality of connection that inspires compassionate giving and receiving. So by going back to zero, I remind myself of what the strategy, why I'm choosing to use the strategy called NBC. I'm reading this a little bit differently. I'm reading is zero stage only before observation or can it be practiced before every next step? And I'd like to be just point out that I don't consider observation one of the steps. You know, observation is one of the skills. It's not a step. The step is actually when you're walking, you're actually moving toward something. So I'm checking zero before I do anything. I'm, and zero is the being. You know, what's my state here? So I'm gonna go on to the next question unless I see something else here. Um, it says, I'm an educator with adolescents. Could you share any articles to support this that I could share? Also, I imagine trauma histories will impact this timeline. Yes, I'll, I'll think about that. And I can, um, you know, I, I really enjoy uh, the work of Sarah Payton, one of our uh, colleagues, uh, another certified trainer. And she does a lot of research on trauma. And so you could check out her website, which is empathybrain.com, empathybrain.com. And uh, you might get some support there. And then there's a gratitude about gratitude. Thank you for, okay, next one, just to, Thank you for re referencing gratitude. I have been practicing a gratitude journal and one of the byproduct experiences that I noticed is the relief 
and rebalancing of my nervous system and how quickly I can reconnect to self. So now when I notice agitation, I seek what, what in this situation am I grateful for and then take action on that gratitude. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. I, I love how that has been expressed so clearly and speaks so much to me about my experience. And I would just add one thing to that too, is I try also, if there's a stress between someone, if it's Jim and I or anybody else, if I can, I try to think of one thing I'm grateful for that this person is in my life or one thing they've done that's made my life more wonderful. So just to add that to the picture. So I see we only have 10 minutes left. I want to make sure to give okay. them this practice. And, so. Okay, we have one more just to be complete here. Is that okay with you? Or you want to... Go uh, ahead. You want to yeah. do the practice and we'll come back to that. Yeah, um, it's not a question. It's a, more of a comment. So. Okay, so we'll come back to your comment. Um, I'll read it. In I want to give you the gift of answering the question, how do we cultivate the zero step? Now I think we all know what we mean by we say it. And now we want to give you a practice so that you can, uh, there's a few ideas on our list that we, we've come up with. First is um, to just acknowledge something like find some kind of a phrase that works for you. Like Joy's that she said a minute ago was if something's happening, it must be acceptable. For me, I, I have a little phrase that I say, I am giraffe. Or maybe even to have the image, I'm putting my giraffe ears on right now. This is a reminder that giraffe energy basically is, is, is the zero step. So that's number one. Find some sort of a way of talking to yourself to remind yourself that, uh, of the zero step in, in your own experience. Secondly, Cultivate warmth for yourself and others. Now there's all kinds of ways that you can cultivate warmth. We talked about one already, which is putting your hand on your heart. Uh, we do eye gazing with each other. We share our wedding vows, uh, probably five days out of the seven each week. We share them with each other because that generates this quality of warmth. I, if she's mad at me, or I think she's mad at me, and, um, she, you know, I have her judged as cold, then I'll go and make her a cup of tea. And I'll bring her a cup of warm tea. And even if she doesn't take it, I put it down next to her or I'll hand it to her. And so then she begins to feel the warmth of the tea. And that actually begins to shift the nervous system, just having a warm cup of tea. So we can hand. do that for ourselves. We can make ourselves a warm drink or depending on, right now it's a little hot to think about, but yeah, actually, um, sitting in front of a fire or just anything that can generate physical warmth can shift our attention you know, to more of a zero step. We talked about putting our own hand on our heart. Um, yesterday or the day before, we had had some sort of little tip. And uh, oh, I remember what I think it was even today. You, you woke up feeling grumpy. And um, mm -hmm. then, then uh, you know, so I was giving her kind of some space. And then we were walking to whatever our next thing was we were going to be doing here at Oroville. And she reached over and touched my hand as we walked. And I heard myself go, aww. <laughs> and it was like that little gentle touch of warmth kind of reignited our, our mutual zero step. And then we already talked about cultivating gratitude. And then another one is to cultivate interest in what's alive to get really, really curious and wondering, what's going on here? I, like, you know, when she gets um, caught up and, and uh, I, I judge her as whatever she is, rather than stick with the judgment of why she should be different than she is, I'm learning to wonder why she is the way she is. What need is she hoping to meet by being in, in the, the mood she's in or saying what she just said or doing what she's doing? So, so cultivating a quality of warm wonder and curiosity. Another one that works for me is when I'm with someone else and there is uh, noticing a lack of warmth inside of myself, I shift my eyes to the person's heart. So I shift it away from the face that may be stressed and actually more triggering. And I look at their heart and I remember their humanity. And then one that we got from some of our clients, uh, people actually come in and live with us temporarily in Maui for a few days to a week or so. Do a little retreat. We have a private retreat. 
Oh, and this, this couple came from uh, the mainland of the United States and they were staying with us for about a week. And part of what we do during these private retreats is we have private sessions like for an hour a day or something like that. And they came up with their own practice. And the man's practice was um, uh, to say something like, uh, do you want to connect? Just something that simple to refocus the mind, to refocus his own heart on, do I want to connect? Do you want to connect? Is this really a good time to connect? To just being open to the idea that connection is actually possible. And one of the most stressful places is with the people that we spend the most time with. You know, the people who are um, more uh, ongoing relationships. I often say that the closer two people get, the more likely there's friction, you know, just like anything else. And so we can actually create agreements between each other to actually sit down and say, you know, if you're stressed, what would work for you? Or if I'm stressed, would it work for you if I, and really start to explore these things that become like a shared understanding, a wake up call. Some people wear malas on their wrist to, to remind them. So you see a mala on my wrist, you know, it can be um, a picture in your pocket. What, what is it? that can help you remember who you really are. It's not taking you any place else but home. What takes you home? So just take a moment right now and consider for yourself, what would, what do you imagine could be something quite simple and accessible that you could do or say that would support you in zero? We'll be quiet for one minute while you contemplate. Those of you who have come up with an idea, just imagine how you might employ it, how you might actually practice it in the next 24 hours. Just make a mental image of yourself practicing it. And we'd love to hear from a few of you about what kind of ideas that you came, came up with that you think might support you in returning to zero when you need it the most. So if you've got something that you're willing to share, please let Salil know by and, raising your hand. Or... And also, for those of you who aren't comfortable speaking out quite so much, feel free to write them in the chat too. What do you imagine will help you to get back to zero? next time you need it the most. I love new ideas. I'd love to hear so, anything that arose for you. I picture myself in Shiva, Shivasana on a boulder while in the mountains. Beautiful. Oh, nice. Tuning into my breath. Um, I see a request here. Can you please repeat what did you mention about ideas as you Line, yes. your line. So the idea is what could you do, you know, once you come up with an idea about how to uh, generate the zero step, to imagine some mental practice of actually trying it, to, to make a mental movie of practice. So going into silence and getting a hug from the other person would work for me? Yeah, if they're willing to give it. I wonder if maybe you might also want to consider you could give yourself a hug just in case that that stress is uh, that is not a space the other person or make has one of those big with. cardboard signs that says free hugs and go stand out on the street corner. <laughs> <laughs> um, make yourself a YouTube video and uh, you know, uh, bringing my focus to the sensations of my body. I love that one. That one's been so helpful for me because it cultivates presence, which is an extremely important part of the zero step. Just remember the practice of this we did together. Remember the hand and the heart and the calm state I felt beautiful. I practice breath, body, needs three times per day. Adding warmth to that daily practice may help me get to zero other times. 
And um, uh, I I sing Thai songs, one kind of a Christian hymn. Yes. Uh, uh, to claim myself, I have found John Kenyon's waters. Water is wet. wet <laughs> exercise super helpful. That's an exercise where you keep increasing intensity, and then. Um, I don't know that that would work for me in the moment when I was actually stressed to keep increasing my intensity, but it, starts but it does start to build some neural pathways in the mind that can naturally bring us back into what in Hawaiian we call pono, which is balance. Or and then focusing on my body sensations and then breathing, beautiful. Oh, that, I find that very helpful too. Putting my attention on my body helps me to really ground because when I start getting really stressed, I disconnect from that. And I think that's pretty common for most of us. And then I remember looking into the eyes of my Siberian Husky who died because he was so joyful and calm. And this can work with any pet or child or animal or her grandmother or, who, you know, some person that you have a, a, an ongoing um, sense of some, unconditional love and warmth. Yeah. Yes. And uh, there's a picture of me when we were when I was very young, and the little girl um, does not have much to worry about. Yeah, yeah, our, kind of connecting with her own innocence, mm -hmm. and that reminds me of my favorite new strategy that I, I adapted from uh, hanging out with Sarah Payton, who is one of my empathy buddies. I'm the luckiest guy in the world to have Sarah Payton as an empathy buddy, and um, Sarah, um, she, she when when I'm getting empathy from Sarah. She talks to me like she's my kindergarten teacher. <laughs> and so I wondered what would happen if I took my jackal voice that's usually in my head, which sounds much more like a football coach or something like that, or a drill sergeant. What if I gave my inner jackal voice a kindergartner, a kindergarten teacher's voice? So now when I judge myself, I say, oh, Jim, you're such an idiot. And it just changes everything because, you know, it sounds a little bit silly, but it, now there's this quality of warmth and it's much more easy for me to connect with empathy to my kindergarten teacher uh, than to my, um, my football coach. So I'm noticing we're out of time and those of you who can see the chat, you might see a few more things that we hadn't read yet. And I apologize to those of you who did write, hoping that might happen. But we are at the point of the end, and I wonder. I think. So I think. Let me just check with Silil. It was an hour, an hour yes, long. Yes, it right? was an hour. And if uh, you're willing, and if there are people who want to stay, but then we would leave it entirely to you. Yes, I'm. I, I'm totally willing to answer questions for another 15 minutes or so for anybody yeah. who wants to stay. Yeah. So we just what what we'll do is for the ones who would like to leave at this hour, we just say thank you to them. And we are really grateful to Jim and Jory and to each one of you for being here. It's really a dream come true for us at NBC Connect. And we hope to have you more often into our future programs. So Thank you, Salil. It's, it's really great to be here, too, because um, I'm so happy to, to, uh, to be a part of this project. I know it's a relatively new project yeah. and that it's, it's bringing uh, access to NBC uh, freely in a way that um, um, may not be possible otherwise. It's always been a very important part of our mission to always have something free uh, available uh, to, to make sure that there's easy access. So thank you so much. Yeah. I also want to acknowledge the efforts of my partner, Mari, who couldn't be here because of another power outage in Romania. And uh, she's put in a lot of efforts too. So I'm really mourning that. Yes, I miss, I miss meeting her. I hope yeah. that uh, next time we can uh, do this, we get a chance to meet her as well. Yes. Thank you so much. So we'll continue and those who would like to leave are most welcome to leave. Thank you. Yes, maybe we'll see some of you at the NBC yes. convention in India. We'll be there yeah. in, a, in a few weeks. And Whoops, there goes our there power goes again. Our power. <laughs> so <now in> the, <laughs> yes, that's amazing. Something. It came on five minutes <laughs> into the call and now it did. <laughs> but luckily our backup is still going here. Look, look at now it's very dim though. Yes. <laughs> Definitely some sign. Yes, yeah. I guess. I guess. Isn't, isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's okay. amazing. I don't know how to get us our faces. Let's see if I can find yeah. a phone. Here's our light. Let's find a phone. It's not this I'm, kind of I'm phone. actually so much uh, inspired by Jim and Jory from the dedication that they have and the work that they're doing. Because Sri Lanka and then India and then China, 
I, I, I would have never done it in my life. I don't know about others, but it's amazing. And I do want people to know that actually we or another person who we work with for some time do a free teleclass. Um, how that timing works out for you, I'm not quite sure, but it's on, it's on Saturdays um, in east of the time zone in the U.S. at uh, 4 o'clock Pacific time. So just so you know about that. The fourth Saturday of the each fourth, month. I'm sorry. And you can you. register for that. It's another free class that you could register for on NBC Academy. And once you register it, it gives you access to a Zoom call recordings like this. And it's either Jim and Jim or Jory or Jim and Jory or our other training partner, Roger Sorrow. So that's also available. So any so, other questions or anything for anybody? Yeah. It was my first meeting and I didn't feel like I was talking to some strangers. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Likewise. You. I think this is probably the first time we've met all of you. And yet uh, there's a sense of real connection for me and uh, a joy. To, uh, to probably talk with people that I wouldn't have this opportunity because we're in a, we're literally on the opposite side of the world. We live in Hawaii, which is about 12 hours. When, when Salil and I were trying to figure out a time to do this call, we found like a, like a teeny tiny uh, window that might be like 10 o'clock at night for me. And I said, I'm probably gonna be brain dead, but I'm willing to try it. <laughs> It's not as expected. Yeah. It's so hard because even today we have we had people from about twenty countries on this call, and it's so hard to make it work for all. It's so difficult. Well, that's especially meaningful to me because we're at Oroville, and I don't yeah. know if you guys know about Oroville, but Oroville is an intentional community, spiritual community in in Tamil Nadu in, in India. And there are about, I think, uh, 60 countries now represented here in Oroville. And so to know that there's 20 of you, uh, 20 different countries represented on the call tonight is certainly in the spirit of Oroville. So we're, it's, Oroville would love to know we're using their internet connection to build community in this way. And okay. once again, thank you so much, Jim and Jory, and each one of you on the call. Okay. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Salil.